erotic fiction is enjoying a resurgence these days, and like other literary genres to be found on bookstore shelves, it promises certain expectations of content to its readers. I'm joined today uh, by Delphine Dryden, Christine Dabo, and Jody Griffin uh, from Carina Press to discuss erotic romance, what it is, what it isn't, and what some of those expectations are. Welcome, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Delphine, your BDSM romance, The Theory of Attraction, won the 2012 Romantic Times Reviewer's Choice Award for Best Ebook Erotic Novella. <laughs> Theory also won a 2013 Colorado Romance Writers Award of Excellence and was a finalist for the Desert Rose RWA's Golden Quill Award. Writers of romance, horror, thrillers, and mysteries don't ever really need to explain their genres, whereas erotica romance writers do. How do you explain the stories that you write? It depends on my audience, um, but usually I'll just be right up front and say, you know, that I write about sex that's kinkier than the norm or kinkier than you probably have read before, depending again on the audience. Um, and, you know, it contains bondage and domination and submission and whatever elements it happens to contain, whichever book I'm talking about at the time. Ladies, what is the difference between erotic romance and erotica? The, the key thing is that the word romance. There's still going to be that close relationship, the development of the relationship between the two main characters or three main characters or whomever it, it happens to be about, that you're still going to have that contract with the reader that there will be a happy ever after. There's going to be that coming together and a permanence to that relationship. Whereas erotica is about the sex, it's about the development and growth of an individual character, but not necessarily with the end goal of having a permanent relationship with somebody else or someone else. Um, and it's more about the individual rather than the relationship itself. Jody, on your website, it states, I tell naughty stories <laughs> about nice girls and the men who love them. Sexy and sweet, wild and wicked, but one thing is guaranteed, by the end of the story, you know that they live happily ever after, as Christine was saying. The happily ever after is, is a hallmark of contemporary category romance. Is this generally true of erotic romance, as Christine was saying? I, I think it is. There's, there's usually either a happily ever after or happily for now. And as Christine had said, it, it's sort of a guarantee that people are moving towards a relationship. It's not just the sex part of the relationship. It's an emotional relationship. Um, in my stories, I really like to um, give that happily ever after. I've been a romance reader for a very long time, and it's just something that I want as part of my stories that I read, and it's something that I want to give my readers. Christine, what are some of the common themes in erotic romance, and um, how do they differ from what you'd find in a contemporary romance? The themes are the same. The difference is that you explore those themes through the actual sex. So instead of closing the door and dealing with the issue at the coffee shop, you keep the door open and you can see how those characters are playing off one another book and you can actually track their development both as individuals and as a couple or trio uh, to that stage. The thing with erotic romance to keep in mind is if you take those sex scenes out, your book should fall apart. How emotional is it for you as a writer to write these um, scenes? I think we, we all as people know what a sexual relationship is like and we just try to make sure that our characters show the same things. I mean, you when you have a new relationship or when you're in an existing relationship, Sometimes the sex is where you can actually speak the most honestly. Um, and sometimes it's the place that you absolutely can't. Are all of your heroes doms? And can you explain the term? <laughs> can an alpha male be a sub? Absolutely. 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 Um, my, my second story, uh, my hero is uh, Forbidden Desires. My hero is actually a switch. Um, and he likes being submissive. He's a, he's a firefighter paramedic, and he is pretty alpha in his real life, his day-to-day -day life. But what he wants in a sexual context is for someone to take control. And it doesn't make him any less of a man. It 
just means he trusts his partner to take care of him. So uh, to, I guess, explain the terms a little bit, a dom uh, or a dom, D-O-M-M-E for a woman, is simply the partner in the relationship who is making the decisions. The submissive is the person who has agreed within a certain context to give up that control. There is actually a, um, a contract that is either can be verbal, it can be written, and it is usually negotiated ahead of time as to what their relationship is going to entail. So it's not somebody saying, I'm submissive, have, you know, have at me. <laughs> it, it can be as specific as, I really enjoy um, being flogged, but please don't spank me. That's not my thing. I really enjoy taking directions. So tell me what to do. Delphine, what can we expect in book three? The, it's the principle of desire, and it's out in December 2013. What's that about? Uh, that is Ed's book, if you're familiar with Ed from the theory of attraction and the seduction hypothesis. And Christine is I kind of nodding because she <laughs> loves Ed. Everybody loves Ed. Um, Ed is an absolutely normal guy. He is neither alpha nor beta. He is kind of grumpy. He's a total <laughs> dweeb. He's a he's a another rocket scientist actually, and he. Um, and he and he the thing that he does is he works on propulsion systems. It's almost all computer based. He's constantly thinking about algorithm algorithms and you know at one I mean one point he just goes off on this whole thing where he's in the kink club, which he has come to sort of accidentally and um and seen all his friends there, but he's gotten roped into pretending to be this girl's boyfriend because there's a thing and it, and um but at the same time he's sitting there pretending to be a submissive and he sort of drifts off because his chain of thought leads into prime numbers and that makes him think about the ramjet propulsion system he's designing <laughs> and the problem that he's having with that and this whole long thing. And he, like a lot of guys, he is okay with doing all this stuff. And the girl that he's interested in, she's just starting to explore that. She's been a lifestyle submissive. That was her big formative relationship from the time she was about 20. And she's just now beginning to explore other avenues, uh, other areas of kink, you know, he'll kind of let her do anything because he, he sort of finds all of that stuff hot. He's, he doesn't identify as a top or a bottom necessarily, but he's, he's willing to be a service top or a service bottom, not just for her, but because he's just suddenly fascinated. It's like this weird hobby that all his friends have. It's like, <laughs> you've been doing this. This is kind of cool, you know? Oh my God, there's a lot of naked people around here. <laughs> and so, so he, he gets drawn into it by accident and, and finds it really appealing for a lot of the reasons that the other geeks in the series do, which is that there's a lot of technical stuff, there's a lot of interesting scientific stuff about why m people might be drawn to this. Um, the woman that he's interested in is a psychology professor, and so she's very interested in the psychology of it. and and does kind of a constant meta-analysis of her, her own involvement in it, and so, which is kind of an issue that she has. She thinks too much. What can you tell us about the, uh, the Mavericks Adults Only Club? Yes. And uh, what is it called? Choose Your Shot, an interactive erotic romance. I'm fascinated. So the book opens up with a character who we haven't met before. Uh, her name is Tegan. And the reader is, is going to be following Tegan and actually directing what she does in the, in the club. So it's the grand reopening. She, there have been some significant changes made. And you get to experience that with her. So you walk in, you see everything, and then you get to a decision point. Do you want to go to the dun the dungeon? There's a du there's a dungeon. Oh, who knows? Of course, knows? there's a dungeon. Of course, there's there is. Do you want to stay on the main floor and hang out with all the naked people dancing? Do you want to go upstairs to the private rooms? And then you get to choose. Once you get, say, you decide, I want to go to the dungeon. Sure. Do you want to go down as a dominant or a submissive? Oh. Different, you engage with different characters depending upon the route that you choose. Um, you get to explore the whole club. You can get down there, go through an entire plot line, and then say, do you want to leave and go home? Or do you want to go back upstairs and try something else? Me. I just thought it was a great opportunity to explore some of the uh, powers of ebooks with hyperlinks. I know it's, it'll be very different for a lot of readers because you're going to get to a point, I don't know about you guys, when I'm reading on my Kobo, I'm like, I'm at 82% and I know exactly how much longer I'm going to do. When you're reading, the, you click the link, it's going to take you to obviously a different spot in the book. So it'll be a very different experience from, say, just reading from cover to cover.
It sounds fascinating. Well, thank you all, ladies, for uh, joining us today and uh, putting us straight on erotica romance. And um, good luck with uh, your books. Thank, thank you, Jamie.